Okay, hi everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. So we're gonna to talk to you guys about how to prepare for a press conference at the upcoming fall meeting. So um, who we are, I'm Lauren LaPuma and I'm joined here today with my colleagues, Liza Lester and Nancy Bobby. And we work in AG's Public Information Office and many of you have probably gotten some emails from us or a couple of our interns that are helping us plan our press conference this year for fall meeting. Um, so we are the main people who you will be um, working with on site at fall meeting. So what we're going to go over today is first, I'm going to give you guys just an overview of kind of the press operation at fall meeting about the members of the media who come, talk to you guys about how to prepare a presentation for the press, talk, to, talk about how to prepare for questions, and then we'll talk about what to expect on the actual day of the press conference, what happens during it, what happens afterwards, and then we'll give you guys some resources and talk about next steps, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So first off, press at fall meeting. So fall meeting, we typically get more than 300 members of the media, and most of these are, are reporters, but they can be other members of the media as well. We get science bloggers, we get authors and filmmakers, photo and video journalists, we also get some journalism students, educators, and then press officers from institutions like the ones that many of you work at, government agencies, um, universities, et cetera. So it's really, a, it's a lot of people, it's a big, um, we have a big press room where everyone kind of gathers to work and meet and mingle. And um, many, many of the major news outlets are represented at fall meeting. We get reporters from the Washington Post, the New York Times, the BBC, CNN, the Associated Press, NPR, and then uh, and also many science-specific publications like Science News, Scientific American. So it's really like a, a, a wide range of, of media outlets that are represented at fall meeting. And for many reporters, this is like one of the biggest scientific meetings that they go to to cover throughout the year. So we really have um, a couple different types of press events at, that, we're get, that we put together for fall meeting. And so the vast majority of them, which you guys are a part of, are press conferences. And the point of press conferences is to break research news. And so usually um, they're either grouped by topic, so it might be several people presenting research related to um, a mission or one particular research project or topic, or they may be grouped together by nothing, by no, with no common theme at all. And those are what we call our geoscience grab bags. Those are presentations that we've identified that um, we wanted to highlight, but they didn't really fit with anything else. So we kind of just grouped them together into one press conference. And then some of you might also be part of a workshop. And workshops are the same in terms of format of press conferences, but rather than presenting breaking news, they're just providing background about an upcoming mission or project um, for reporters in attendance. So when you all are getting ready to prepare your presentation for the press, how should you begin? Well, the first thing to know is to think about how reporters convey scientific information to their readers. And so it's a little bit different than you might be used to when it comes to, than what you might be used to with a scientific presentation. Normally when you're giving a presentation or you're writing a research paper, you start with the introduction, the previous research, and then your background, you go and then you go into your methods of what you did in this particular study, and then move on to your results, your discussion and conclusion. Well, when reporters talk to, write stories for their readers, they actually do this um, in the opposite order. They start off with the discussion, the results, the conclusion, then move on to the implications of the finding, and then they get into the details of the actual research methods. And there's two reasons for doing this. There's an old school reason and a new school reason. The old school reason is that back in the days of print newspapers when there was no internet, um, if a news story was simply too long and it didn't fit on a page of a newspaper, an editor would literally take out a pair of scissors and cut off the bottom of the news story. So if you do it like that, then you have to get the most important information, which is the result, the finding, up top. If you do this, if, if you were doing this and you're writing a scientific paper, you would cut off that most important part, which is the finding and the implication. But if you write a news story in the opposite way, you still get that high level information, but some of the details might get cut off instead, and that's okay. And the new reason that people write the stories this way is just because people have short attention spans and they really need to know the, the most important information first. The, the purpose of a news story is really that you should know the outcome of the news story or the outcome of the research um, in the very beginning. You should know what the point is right up front. So keep, this is just something to keep in mind when you're creating a presentation for the press. So what we want you to focus on really is the result you're finding and why it matters. So when you're going to create your presentation, each of you will be speaking for about five to seven minutes. And so we recommend you have about one slide per minute of speaking time. 
And we recommend that you use a lot of visual aids and less text. We don't want the slides to be too text heavy because you only have a couple of minutes to convey this information and a lot of it just can't be absorbed in that short amount of time. Use plain language, so you really don't want, you want, really want to avoid using any, you know, as much scientific jargon as possible and really just think about explaining it to, you know, someone who's not a scientist. Try not to get too bogged down into the methods and really focus on the results and what you found and, and what that means. We also recommend that in your final slide, you summarize like your main message, your findings, and then also include your contact information so reporters can get in touch with you after the meeting is over. And then remember that everything must be shareable, so we can't, you can't use anything that is copyrighted. And I'll go into detail about that in a little bit. So what exactly, so I've kind of alluded to this already, but what exactly should be in your presentation content? Well, there's really four things that you want to hit. The first is the news. This is what did you find? This is, this is the who, what, when, where, why, how. This is what you did, what, you know, why this study came about, what you did, what you found, why it, um, and who did it, when, where, and how. The next is the impact. This is why does it matter? How does this affect people? This is the implications of your work on the broader impacts. You really need to be able to answer that question, you know, why should someone care about this particular finding? The next is the context. And this just helps put the research into a, a better frame for the reporters to understand. So think about what has changed? What, how, you know, how does your result compare to what was already known about this particular field of research? Why is it interesting and why is it different? And then, you know, think about all these things and summarize them up into your take home message. That's really kind of like, what does all of this mean? You know, why should someone care? And then what is, what do you, what is the one or two things that you really want the reporter to take away from your presentation? And to give you an example of this, this is a um, example from a press conference we did last year at fall meeting about tornado research. Um, and so this researcher, the news was that this researcher had combined a new type of Doppler radar with photos and videos of tornadoes, and they showed, and the research showed that tornadoes materialize from the ground up. Now, the impact of this is that tornadoes can, are obviously a natural disaster, and so this finding may help save lives. That is the main implication. You know, tornadoes kill people every year, and this may change the way that tornado forecasters issue their warnings. The context why this finding is interesting and different is that it actually challenges it goes against the current scientific consensus and it challenges the way existing assumptions about how tornadoes were classically thought to form. Most, uh, many scientists had thought before that tornadoes form from the cloud and move downwards, but this research showed that actually they start from the ground and move upwards. So that again, would may possibly change the way that forecasters issue their warnings and could, could save lives in the end. So the take home message, and this was a quote from the researcher in a press release that we wrote about this research, we're not going to really ever be finding strong evidence of a tornado descending, so we need to stop making that a priority in our forecasting strategies. So, and I mentioned this before about avoiding jargon. So just think about the word you use. You really want to use simple terms and as much as possible. If you do have to use a technical term or some jargon, just make sure that you define it. Try to avoid acronyms and shorthand as much as possible. You know, things like NASA, that's okay, but um, really complicated or unnecessary acronyms, try to avoid them. And when you're talking about um, chemical formulas or scientific abbreviations, say, say the word, don't say the abbreviation. So for example, say carbon dioxide, not CO2. And so I mentioned this earlier too, you know, keep your slides simple and try to use a lot of visual aids. You know, you only have a couple of minutes to talk to the reporters, so you want, so you want to get information across um, as clearly and effectively as possible. And people process visual information much more quickly and effectively than they process written information. So we really encourage you to use photos, any multimedia you, uh, multimedia you might have, like um, videos, audio, illustrations, infographics. If you have any props, feel free to bring them. This example here on this slide is a prop that a, um, a geologist brought a couple years ago showing two different kinds of building construction and how those types of buildings would shake during an earthquake. So it's a really great tactile visual aid. Use you know, simple color schemes, keep it, keep it simple, use black and white, don't go too crazy with the colors or the background. Um, use only, if you have to use a graph or a chart, use ones that are simple and easy to read and I'll give you some examples of those in just a minute. Try to keep it as uncluttered as possible. And the format is um, 16 by nine widescreen if you wanna keep it to that. 
So images, images that are really good are images of you doing your work out in the field, in the lab, whatever you're doing. Those are really great. They really help um, drive home the point of what you did and how you found your result. So those are great. Graphics. Here's an example of a really good infographic. This shows um, you know, the layers of Earth's atmosphere and where certain things are within that air glow, satellites, the International Space Station, etc. So this is a really good, um, it's simple, it's easy to, very easy to understand. Illustrations are great too, and they do not have to be sophisticated. Here's a very simple illustration of the Curiosity rover in Gale Crater on Mars, and shows a little bit of the different kinds of, um, uh, a little bit of the geology that the rover is going over. Um, this is not sophisticated at all, but it gets the point across, and that is all that matters. So, great example. Here's an example of a graph that is very easy to read, um, and that's a, it's a would be a good example of something to use in a press conference. There's really only one piece of information that the, uh, re that the reporter needs to take away from this, which is the change in sea ice extent over time. And you can see the trend very clearly that happened um, in 2016. The opposite of that, here's one that is way, way, way too complicated. There is just so much information on here, and, it's, and for someone who is not an expert, they would not know how to read this and what to take away from it. So if you have something that's very complicated like this, we suggest that you avoid using it. Just like that, here's a chart that actually has been used in a press conference in previous years. This again is way too complicated and unnecessary. There's just too much information on here that um, it's just too much for anyone to pick up and understand in just a minute or two. So avoid using things that are this complicated. And with your layout, like I said, you know, keep it simple, use black and white, try to avoid um, using really busy images, especially in the background. The slide on the left is great, it's black and white, you know, it has just like a couple bulleted points of text. The slide on the right isn't that bad, but it has this really busy image in the background, and that actually makes it harder to read. And so then they have to use these different colors, and that just makes it a little bit more hard to understand. So we just say keep it simple as much as possible. And my favorite piece of advice is resist the urge to collage. Sometimes one photo is all you need and just stick with that, maybe two, but try to avoid what this person did here, which is about 30 photos of different glaciers on one single slide. This is just way too much information that is very unnecessary, that doesn't need to be there. And so you have to make sure that everything in your presentation is shareable. So reporters may want to use your images um, or graphics or multimedia in their stories. And if that's the case, then you either, you either need to have the copyright to it or it has to be in the public domain or have a Creative Commons license. And you know, photo co and image copyright is very complicated and we can help you find things that, um, that, are, that are able, you're able to share. But um, for now, here's some gen general ways, excuse me, places to find things. Anything from government agencies is fine. It's in the public domain. Um, Wikimedia Commons is a good place to find things. Creative Commons as well. Anything that comes from you, yourself, that's fine as long as you, um, you're okay with reporters sharing it or using it in their stories. You can also search on Flickr. Um, most of the government agencies have Flickr accounts. Creative Commons also has a Flickr account. These are great, great repositories of free photos to use. You can even search for photos that are in the public domain or have a Creative Commons license on Google. If you, go, if you do a Google search here, it's just an example of one I did for Jupyter. You go over to where it says Tools, and then under Usage Rights, click Labeled for, for Reuse with Modification, and that will filter all of your results by photos that have a Creative Commons license or are in the public domain. And again, this is image copyright can be complicated, so if you're unsure at all, please ask us. We're happy to help, or if you're really unsure, just don't use it. And if you need help making your presentation, obviously the three of us here at AGU, we can help you. And also the press officers at your own institution can help. So if you know them, that's great. If you don't know who they are, you can find them, go to your institution's website, look for anything that says press, media, communications, and then find the contact information. So here's an example from Woods Hole. That's how you would contact their media relations office. They're, they're there, they're there to help you. They'd be happy to help um, you run through your presentation ahead of time and provide feedback on um, your work. All right, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Liza to talk about preparing for questions from reporters. Hi everyone, I'm Liza Lester and I'm Lauren's counterpart here at ATU. 
Um, we're going to talk now a little bit more about what to expect when you get on site at the meeting and are ready to present at your press conference. So during the press conference, a big chunk of time, at least half of it, is going to be devoted to Q&A. And this, this is a source of a lot of anxiety for some speakers during press conferences. Um, I want to first reassure you that unless you're the head of a government agency, um, it's unlikely that the reporters are going to grill you unmercifully or, you know, ask you questions that are really outside the scope of what you're there to talk about. Um, but that said, you're going to feel a lot better if you do a little preparation before you come to your press conference. And some of the things you can do are brainstorming questions that you think might come up and how you might want to approach answering them. Do this with a partner, with a colleague, or with even just a friend who doesn't isn't a scientist and might ask you different types of questions and you would have to answer them in a way that you wouldn't answer your colleagues and using language that's a little more simple or understandable by everyone. Um, if you do get asked a question that you're not prepared to answer, you could use some transition statements to move back to what you are prepared to answer um, by saying something like, well, that's not my field of expertise. I can you know, provide you with with a contact name for someone who does know that, but here's like what I do know. Um, you can anticipate things that you think might be contentious related to things you know are issues like climate change and things like that and be you know, just ready to answer those questions. And like we said, you might want to come prepared with names and contact information for some of your colleagues that either work with you or work in the same field and can answer the questions that you don't feel you're expert in. Um, but you never have to answer a question that you don't know the answer to. Just like when you're giving a scientific presentation, it's better to say that you don't know. So yeah, so like we were just saying, if you, you can take a minute, take a breath when you get a question that you're not quite prepared for, gather your thoughts. You don't have to plunge right in. Don't be afraid of a few seconds of silence. Reporters will understand, and then you'll get a better answer out there. Um, and then if you want to pass it off to a colleague, you could say that on the spot, or you could come back and say, I'll get back to you by email or by phone with that contact information, um, and just say, this is beyond my area of expertise. I don't feel comfortable. You don't have to feel pressured to speculate on something that you just don't know the answer to. Um, but you don't want to say, I don't want to comment or no comment, because that might sound like you're putting them off. Okay, what to expect on the day of the press conference? First, how to find us. We're going to be on the third level of Moscone South, so you might want to keep in mind that the press conference center is big and that we might not be in the same location as your previous event, so give yourself plenty of time to get there and arrive 15 minutes early so that you can be there and comfortable and not feeling anxious that you're arriving at the last minute and we'll have time to talk to you and make sure we know how to pronounce your name um, and get you seated and ready to go. What to bring with you? So next week, you're going to be hearing from Lauren and I with, with information about where you can upload your presentation when you're ready. And we want you to upload that a day before your press conference so that it is ready to go and our IT guys will have that loaded up and you won't have any worries and we'll check and make sure that all your slides work and your videos work. But you also want to bring all those things with you on a flash drive as backup, but also in case you need to share them with reporters on site. Maybe they really like some of those pictures that you know you have permission to use. And they would like you'd be like to be able to give it to them on the spot, or you might have some handouts or like additional information you'd like to access. So have that in your pocket on you. Come with your business card or your own contact information, ready to hand that out so that reporters can get in contact with you right away. What to wear? You don't have to wear a suit. You can wear a suit, but this is not the day to wear like your lucky shirt that is a t-shirt with frogs all over it or um, some other inappropriate graphic, as has happened to some scientists in the past, and they have been embarrassed. But what you could wear, for example, is this very nice button down with um, the branding of your institution on it. That'd be perfect for standing up in front of a video camera and giving um, expert information on science. You can have plain colors, just keep in mind business casual. And like I said before, you want to plan on having a lot of time for Q&A, and that's why we ask you to keep your presentation is really brief. So if you have four people on a panel, then each one of you is probably going to be speaking for five minutes, and you really want to keep moving along and keep that within that time frame. Um, when you arrive, we're going to help you get seated. You'll have a name placard stating who you are, and someone from our staff will get up and introduce you and get the press conference started. 
This is going to be streamed live on the web for registered reporters as well as the reporters in the room. So you might want to expect that you're going to get some questions from people who aren't visible there, but will be relayed by us. So what is on the record? Basically anything you say during a press conference is going to be on the record and that's the thing you need to remember. In fact, when you are in the room with the reporters, you should think you're speaking on the record. Something you say could be overheard. And um, if you say something maybe in language that you don't want repeated, well, don't do that <laughs> because that could end up, you could end up quoted or get a follow-up question that you don't like. So yeah, it's just think like you're kind of on stage as soon as you arrive at the press conference press room. How many journals will come? So we mentioned we're going to have potentially hundreds of journalists there, but they won't necessarily all be in the room for every press conference. It's a big meeting and lots of competing events that could be taking them away. Um, and so if you walk in and there's only a, like a small group there, don't feel discouraged because some, one of those people might be from Scientific American or the New York Times and you don't know that. And um, that is the one reporter who's just really interested in your topic. They're there to see you specifically and even if it's just that one guy, you're going to get that great story, maybe in the Washington Post, you know? So, like, just don't worry about how many people are in the room. Give your presentation regardless. Be excited. And um, it's going to be great. <laughs> okay, after the press conference, what comes next? What should you expect? Like we said, we want you to come prepared with your contact information. You also probably want to have a slide at the end of your presentation that says your name and how you can be reached, just as a reminder. Um, you want to be available during the meeting. So if somebody calls you and wants to do an interview, try to respond right away and plan that you will be available to do that. If you could hang around a bit after the press conference, you don't have an immediate event to run off to, that'd be great because that's a time when a lot of reporters will approach you to just ask you more questions or talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. And you should also be ready that you might be asked to do TV or radio. Okay, so what are your next steps in preparing? First, make your presentation based on this wonderful advice that Lauren has given you today. And you can use us as a resource or your own public information officers at your institutions to help you do this, to give you advice. Um, many of you have been in contact with us about preparing for a rehearsal in the next week. Um, it's really important that we do this. It's gonna make you feel better. It's gonna help you, you know, hear the other people on your panel and coordinate with them. Um, and it'll also give us a chance to give you some advice um, and feedback on your presentation. So please really take that seriously and. Be sure to do the rehearsal with us. Um, the other really important thing to remember is that it is so important that you don't talk to reporters before the press conference, because if somebody writes a story, then the press conference is kind of, it's already out there. No one else will cover it. It's, it's over. So keep that kind of secret. If someone does approach you, if they saw your abstract or they saw our advertisement and they want to talk to you, please get in touch with us and we'll help you decide how you should answer them. Okay, so other resources that you might draw on as you're preparing your presentation. Check out AGU's website. The Share and Advocate page has lots of great advice for how to talk to the public in general. So just lots of good ideas for talking to broader audiences. Um, we've sent you a press conference guide and also slides from previous press conferences that worked out well. If you need those links again, feel free to reach out to us and we have to send them. And you can also check out AGU's YouTube channel where we have recordings of past press conferences to just get an idea of how it will go and what a press conference sounds like. And once again, here is all the staff will be sending you our cell phone numbers as well so you can reach us during the meeting. Um, Larry O'Hanlon will be joining us as a social media lead. And um, if this is your first time doing a press conference, feel free to come by earlier in the week before yours and see what how it goes down. Help, help you feel comfortable when you arrive at your press conference. Yep, and you can always stop by the press room at any point to find us and talk to us, ask us questions. That press room is mainly where we'll be, but we'll also be in the press conference room with the other press conferences. So find us in one of those two rooms or right around the corner from each other if you need anything at all, or you can email us at this email address here. Now we're going to move on to our Q&A session <laughs> with you all. This is your chance to ask us questions about what to expect or anything that you think has come up already in your preparations. And we can 
we got some questions on the chat. No, no there's no questions, but you can you can people can write in on the questions tab. You can write in on the question box um, on GoToWebinar or in the chat. Either, or in the chat. Either will work. But just to stress, so we are in a different, if you've done a press conference before with us and we're back in San Francisco, um, we are in a different location. So if you think you know where you're going, <laughs> it actually is going to be different this year. We are in Moscone South. That's the building with the poster hall. And we're on the third floor, which is a new part of the Moscone Center. So um, third floor, Moscone South, um, like, like, uh, like Lauren and Liza said, come you know, check it out earlier in the week just to make sure you know where it is and how to get there. Um, okay, we have we do have some questions. Um, are the conferences recorded or live streamed, and how can those be accessed? Yes, good, great question. So that all the press conferences are live streamed and recorded, um, so anyone can can watch those, um, and we can send you uh, the link if you're interested. Um, just email us um, at news at agu .org, um, and we can send you that link. It's really for reporters, but um, you know, feel free to, to you, you, you can you can share that with other folks. It's only reporters though who can ask questions on the live stream. Um, we want to leave enough time for them to do that. And and same goes for for folks in the room. So if you have colleagues joining you, please you know your colleagues can come and, and see you at your press conference. But we do only allow questions from reporters in the room because we just we do have a limited amount of time. So, so um, and then all of them are then posted to our YouTube page, um, our YouTube channel. Um, the next day. So if someone wants to see it or you want to share it, that's that's where it will be. Um, but yeah, just email us for that for that link, and we can we can shoot that over to you. Um, okay, for the slides, is there a template we should follow, or just use our own style templates? Yeah, so you can. It's actually both. Either one. We will have we have a template, and we can send it to you. It's like kind of like the official fall meeting slide template, and we'll send it to all of you guys, and you're free to use that. But don't feel obligated to. If you'd rather use your own slide template, that's okay. Are the slides standard or widescreen? They are widescreen, 16 by 9 format. So when you're in PowerPoint or Keynote or whatever you're using, just make sure you choose that as the slide size. And that's the, the template that we have. And that's the template that we have, yes, yeah. the widescreen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about using figures from the paper? Can I use a figure? Yes, you can use a figure from your paper as long as it is easy to understand and simple and clear. And it depends on when the, where the paper was published. If it's an, you have to make sure you have the copyright to use it. So if it's in an AGU journal, that is totally fine. AGU has the copyright and we allow you to use that. If it was published in a non-AGU journal, you'll have to ask for the journal's permission and see what their rules are about using that. Will you be sending the AGU logo for us to include in our slides? I believe the AGU logo is on the slide template. It's actually the fall meeting logo. But if you, I guess, if you're using your own slide template and you would like the fall meeting logo, we can send that to you. Yeah, email us at news at agu org and we can get that over to you. Yep. But yes, the template includes that. Um, it's actually the fall meeting logo. So, it's, um, is there any other questions? Let's see. What if I have a last minute emergency and can't make my press conference? Yeah, if you if there's a last minute emergency, something that comes up and you can't make it or you're going to be late, just let us know. So we're going to send you all of our cell phone numbers. So just give us a call or email us at our emails that we've given to you or at news at org and let us know as soon as possible. So we could do a couple of different things. We could have one of your colleagues fill in for you. There also is the op option to participate remotely um, if if that's the only option. But don't worry about it. Just let us know as soon as you can. I think that's it. I think that's all the questions. But, you know, we're always here um, via email and phone. If you have more questions for us, um, feel free to reach out anytime between now and the meeting. We'll be on site in San Francisco um, on Friday or Saturday. So we'll be there all week, the weekend before the meeting. Um, feel free to let us know if you want to stop by or just, you know, ask us some more questions. We're here. Obviously, this week is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So we'll be out for on Thursday and Friday for the holiday. But Again, let us know if there's anything else that you have. We'll send you all these links again. We'll send you, remind you of the room numbers, our cell phone numbers, the slide template, all of that. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll post this recording, webinar recording to the web as well, so you can watch it again if you want to. We'll send you all the slides as well, in case you, so you didn't have to write down everything that we said. Um, and yeah, we're really excited for this. We we hope you guys are excited too. We think it's going to be a great, great fall meeting. And yeah, we're happy, excited to meet you all in San Francisco. So if there's anything else, just send us an email or give us a call and we'll talk to you soon.